welcome to Forbidden Planet TV and today we are joined by the phenomenal Grace Curtis to talk about Frontier which is publishing very very soon from Hodder Books. So hey Grace, welcome to Titan Towers, thank you for joining <laughs> thank us. You. Lovely. <laughs> Um, so what were your inspirations for Frontier? There's obviously kind of, uh, no spoilers, some hints of uh, Firefly, Cowboy Bebop, all, all the good stuff. But, yeah. yeah, Bebop was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mad Max as well. Uh, oh gosh, I don't know, too many things. <laughs> I had too, too much on my mind at once when I was writing it, but yeah, pretty much everything I was into. Um, all I New Vegas, if you played that, that was my big touch point. Uh, cool. um, but yeah, it's kind of a combination of everything I love, like funneled down into one little book. <laughs> <laughs> and um, quite interestingly, there is up to a point like the unnamed narrator. So was that a kind of conscious decision? Are you kind of hoping that maybe people could almost put themselves in the shoes of the narrator kind of as it starts? Oh, you mean like the, the sort of protagonist yes. perspective hopping thing? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think there was, a, there was a bunch of different reasons for it. And it, it's funny, I've seen people have different responses to it of being like, what is this? Is this, is it, is it like a metaphor? Is it some kind of very contrived literary thing? Um, yeah, but for me, I guess I wanted to pe people to have the sense of, uh, rather than entering someone's head and being told why you like them and everything about them, to, to form an attachment from the outside and to observe them and then to kind of gradually get closer almost more like you would with a real person mm -hmm. and by seeing them in all these different contexts you get kind of a sense of mystery and attention and then you kind of get closer and closer and closer to the to the payoff which is their actual identity which kind of symbolized in like getting the name yes towards the end rather than towards <laughs> the beginning oh it's it's so so good and even the i just I just have to say like the first kind of chapter when i picked it up and with the kind of salvages and stuff and i was just i was hooked from then <laughs> so it's just like i oh i love this um, i've heard people be like very violent in the it's i think the uh, the opening chapter almost sets the tone a little bit too dark people are like <laughs> yeah, wow that yeah. body count is pretty high but it, <laughs> it gets a little more after that yeah. I promise, I promise <laughs> Um, and there's such a wonderful kind of lyrical like prose to the novel so do you kind of find because obviously you're a games journalist as well do you find that it's a very different writing style or do, or do you find that kind of lyrical in your kind of non-fiction yeah I, th I think that's style? that's a combination of that's kind of just how I write that's my style yeah. I, I, I take a long time to do things and I'm pretty verbose <laughs> maybe that's the wrong word but yeah I, I i enjoy writing that but i guess for frontier i had to kind of slip into the world i did come up with this almost like a tiny little like five percent over the top mm -hmm. way of speaking which i think helped me sort of embrace the genre enos of it and embrace that kind of um spaghetti western feel so i guess it's like me but like 10 percent extra i guess i would describe it <laughs> yeah um and talking of the book obviously the fantastic kind of uh, range of characters so how did you start writing those characters and did they kind of come to you fully formed yeah more or less I, I think they, they come into my head fully formed but that sometimes in the process of writing you find out they're not entirely what they appear to be at first but you have to kind of you have to spend time with them and go through the story in order to figure that out but yeah for most of all I, I normally start with a very strong image and a very strong voice and feeling and then I'm like I sort of spin them on the table like a marble and see where they go, which is a huge amount of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we're going to touch on now as well. Um, so there's an interesting idea of, I suppose, kind of the near future or even kind of further away future. So is this kind of an idea of how you see the Earth could potentially oh, go? No, no, no. Oh, no. It's going to be much worse. No, real life oh, is going to be much worse than this, yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't think that we're ever going to leave this planet, um, mm -hmm. certainly not within the next couple of hundred years, which is why it goes. This is pulling again on like a very common science fiction trope of uh, people leaving the Earth. Mm -hmm. We do not have the technology. It's not going to happen. And frankly, climate change is going to be worse than how it's depicted in this uh, uh, book because most people are going to be here for it. So, no, I don't think this is this is in no way speculative. This is yes. a sort of pu more pulling on different ideas and periods in history to tell a story about the moment we're in now mm -hmm. than it is me trying to accurately predict what's gonna happen if that makes sense yes. yeah yeah and did did you find kind of the research for this 
so kind of where where did that start because it obviously it sounds like there's a lot of kind of um real world <laughs> things creeping in there yeah, so, yeah it's it's hodgepodge really again i wasn't um i wasn't aiming to write an extremely accurate depiction of how i think climate change is going to play out because mm. again this is this is a pulpy adventure story and if yes. i if i adhere too close to the truth it wouldn't be fun yeah. so this is more of a like <laughs> worst case scenario and yet at the same time it's like in the um in the vein of you know david Triffin, they used to call them cozy catastrophes yes so it's like the worst case scenario has already happened don't think about it don't worry about it mm -hmm. and then this is a story kind of post all of that right so it's again i'm like i wanted to deal with climate change on a kind of emotional thematic level mm -hmm. um <laughs> while also uh keeping the tone if if not light then less granular yeah if that makes sense yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I was um, kind of drawing some comparisons to obviously Becky Chambers because you have that, yeah, that kind of like almost cosy element, even yeah, though it's, it's, it's a little cosy, yeah, yeah apart um, from the bodies, <laughs> apart from all the bodies. Mm -hmm. um, would you say there are any other authors who may have kind of influenced how you approach this book? Oh, uh, I mean, loads. I, I, this is really pretentious, but like, I I was reading a lot of I was reading a bit of Chaucer when I was writing wow. it. Okay. He, he does like he does like these great you know bunch of different like super fun character stories. Mm. So that was that was a big touch point. I'm also really inspired by um, comics, manga. Yes. I'm a huge weeb for lack of a better word, <laughs> and sort of those kind of stories uh, really bled into it as I was writing as well. I think. Mm -hmm. And. Um as well so obviously coming coming a little bit back to um i suppose your day job and games kind of journalism and stuff so um is there kind of any games and stuff you're playing at the moment that have influenced this as well Ooh, you know i get a lot of comparisons to borderlands um though like, again like fallout was the main thing that was on my mind like and that was another inspiration behind the name changing because in the fallout series you have different you sort of step into the shoes of a different archetype you know the wanderer mm -hmm. the traveler the courier whatever um, so that was that was a big touch point. I've also been told that it's um, it, <laughs> Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. <laughs> like I had someone say, because that's that's another one where it's like he Mario, he's kind of on a he's on a journey of self discovery, and he has to step into different genres and different shoes over the course of it. So slightly out of left field, but I can I can see the comparison. But there's a murder mystery on a train at one point in both games. So um, there you have it. Yeah, no, they need to remake. I don't think I ever got the chance to play it, which is annoying. So sometimes you know like. For example, recently at Persona 3 and 4 game remakes, and so finally I can play it. <laughs> Very excited. Um, so, we touched on before the interview, so uh, you're working on book two already. So, is there any kind of little spoilers you can give us? Uh, um, I guess one thing I'd say is it's uh, similar in spirit, but it's not mm. a direct sequel. It's, it's set in the same universe, but it's uh, and it does a similar thing with if, if you like the sort of lock of the lots of perspectives and mm -hmm. the big heart if those things appeal to you i think you'll find a lot to love in the new one um though it leans more in a more in a mystery than an action direction okay. would be my, my main the main difference between the two okay. but it's got that same sense of i think fun and yeah genre hopping and space and guns and running around and all the you know all the fun <laughs> stuff i promise is still in there it's just a little bit more mysterious yeah. Oh, well, I mean, it sounds or like already amazing to have book two, and there is a little sneak peek there is, in there as there well. Is. You can have so, a look. Yeah. Yes, yes. We won't have to. We won't have to wait too long. Hopefully not. Um, so, <laughs> well, it's all down to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, to finish off the interview today, so I always love to kind of hear what authors are reading and what they can recommend. Um, so, what are you currently reading, and what is the one book you're most looking forward to publishing later this year? Uh, oh, it's so I'm currently reading. I'm reading the new Amy. Is it Amy Kaufman? Amy Kaufman? Uh, yes. Oh um, yes. I'm. Yes. I'm. I got a, I got a proof <laughs> copy of that in the mail, and I'm loving it so far. Is it called the the uh, oh, the Island of the Gods? Is, yes. Yeah. Oh, is it the Isle of Gods or the Island of Gods? Yes. Oh, yeah. Or the Islands of Gods. Beautiful. If you don't know the if you don't know the title, remember the cover. It's got this beautiful oil painting of Bucky the Woodmore hair. It's fantastic. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. It's like a swashbuckling ocean adventure. Uh, really, just just 
bloody just good fun. <laughs> yeah um, and i'm also reading the road by uh chris uh hadley which is like a non-fiction book about lonely roads which is awesome oh, if you should go support that too uh and as for what's coming out this year maybe it's a bit too soon but i know the samantha the new samantha shannon is actually yeah. out on the day we're filming this yes so that's yes. exciting i will be scooting down to the shops to grab myself one of those promptly yeah. uh because fucking orange trees excuse me yeah, because no. orange tree is fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's it's too good. It's yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is it is too good. I think the Amy Coffin, I think it's her first standalone as well because yeah. she's well she's done some middle grade I think that that she wrote herself but she's obviously written with Jay Kristoff before and with Megan Spooner mm -hmm. so it, yeah it just sounds it sounds so it good, should, so. you just feel like you're in a very capable hands with certain world world building is wonderful yeah once you've done. <sighs> Perfect. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, we will have signed copies available on the website and in all of our stores. So go pick one up and when we sell out, we'll get it back. <laughs> That's the plan. Um, but thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, yeah, me. enjoy the rest of your day. Edits coming in. And yeah. So, oh Lord, no pressure. Yeah, this is gonna be this is a fun part of the day. It's all downhill from here. Okay. No, no, I'm kidding. I love it. I love it. I love getting it. I love I love to receive feedback. <laughs> Molly, if you're listening. Um, all right. See everyone soon for the next Women Planet TV interview. Bye. Bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.